we've been studying the book of Hosea. And going back to Hosea chapter 1, we saw that God told Hosea to go get a wife of whoredoms. And we've been talking about whoredoms. And I thought this would be a good time during our study of, of Hosea to look at exactly what are the whoredoms of Hosea in the Bible. And I think you're going to find this very interesting. Because what we're going to look at today is we're going to shoot down with rockets and guns and, and bombs and torpedoes a religion. And we're going to also see something. We're going to see the church today as Israel was in Hosea's time. So we're going to step aside, but we're not stepping aside in the book of book of Hosea. We're going to look at the whoredoms. And of course, physical means sexual. There was definitely sexual prostitution. It's how many ages and ages has been going on? And they'll say, you know, prostitution is, you know, the original occupation. That's that's a lie. The original occupation was Adam was called to be a gardener, a husbandman. It took quite a few years after that for a woman to start selling herself. If the world says it, turn it off, shut it up, see what the Bible has to say. That's more important. And then we have the spiritual religious hoarding. Now Webster's 1828 Dictionary describes uh, whoredoms as lewdness, fornication, practice of unlawful com commerce of other sex, it's applied to either sex, male or female. In scripture, it is applied to idolatry. The, the leaving of the worship of the true God to worship idols. Now let's take definition two. That's the clue. Worship of idols. Okay. Hosea is written about the eighth century BC and the time numbers I'm giving you the, 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 they're not exact dates okay don't say it's exactly what no it's not it, it's the, during the reign of Jeroboam 2 that's 786 to 746 BC now if you look at Hosea chapter 1 verse 1 we see it says in the days of Jeroboam that would be there was a previous Jeroboam that we're going to look at this is Jeroboam 2 and the dates are B.C., before Christ, Jesus Christ, before his birth. And that's very important as we look at the second aspect of our study today. Hosea 1.1, 1, 1, you have Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, kings of Judah. And then you have the Jeroboam, the son of Joash, the king of Israel. Now, Go to Judges 17. The book of Judges 17. And Judges 17 and Judges 18, we're going to look at tonight in a couple other places in the Bible, is approximately 1,118 to 1,078 B.C. B.C. Before Christ. That's important. So let's let's read on. Verse one is a man of Mount Ephraim, and I'm going to not. I'm going to read summary of the verses. You're going to say that's not what the verse said. I'm not reading the complete verses because I want to get all what we have to do. This is a study we have. We have to get it all. So there's a man of Mount Ephraim. His name is Micah. Very important. Verse two. For his mother, there's 1,100 shekels of silver that was taken, stolen. In return, she cursed. And he spank in her ears. He said, the silver is with me. Her son was the thief. I took it. So there is a amount of money, 1,100 shekels of silver that was cursed, that was stolen. Here it is, mom, mother, and mother blesses it. Blessed be thou of the Lord, Jehovah. 
my son. That's important. Verse 2. Oh, no, verse, that was verse 2. Verse 3. The money is dedicated, the silver is dedicated to the Lord. Well, that's not bad. Giving it to the Lord. She's going to make, she is going to make, the mother is going to make a graven image. And a molten image. So he returns the money back to her. We have a woman, a mother. She has a son that is a thief. She cursed the money. The money is returned. It is given over to the Lord. And she's going to make a graven image. Notice the word grave. G-R-A-V-E. Engraven. That's a clue too. Graven image, and she's going to make a molten image, which the law of God for these Hebrews, for these Jews, is wrong, abomination. But who cares what God has to say? We're going to do it our way. And verse 4, 200 went to, 200 shekels of silver went to the, to the founder. Now, whatever happened to the 900, I don't know. It's not even mentioned. I hope you know where I'm going with this, because if you know the particular religion I'm talking about, your money's given to them, you don't know where it goes. So it's given to a founder who therefore made the graven image and the molten image, verse 4. They are in the house of Micah now. Verse 5, Micah had a house of gods. Small G-O-D-S. Man, he's moving up in the world. He made an ephod and a teraphim. A teraphim is a household god. He made it just like the high priest and the priest. He's got the imitation clothing of the true. That's, in pay, that's important. You need to pay attention to that. He consecrated one of his sons, verse 5, to be a priest. He's not Levite. He's an Ephraim. We assume he's an Ephraimite. But he takes a common, his son... And he consecrates his son to be a priest. Of these two, at least two images. A graven image and a molten image. That's important too. They're silver. This is all important. And then he has a priest. One priest. That's not a godly priest of the tribe of Levi. So, verse 6, there's no priest. There's no king. Everybody's doing that which is right in their own eyes. That's important. Verse 7. And there was a young man of Bethlehem, Judah. Because there's another Bethlehem in Israel. This is Bethlehem, Judah. That's the one, you know, where Jesus was born. B.C. Of the family of Judah who is a Levite. Okay, here's a Levite. Now, you've heard me say this over and over. A, Lev a, a priest is a Levite, but not all Levites were priests. And of the family of Levites, the family of Aaron had to be the priest. Yeah, any other Levite, you were a servant to the temple and the services of the, but you weren't a priest. Verse 8, and they departed, and he departed, and he come to Micah, Mount Ephraim, the house of Micah. Remember, it was the house of gods. Remember that. Verse 10, and Micah said to him, dwell with me and be unto me a father and a priest. Does that sound familiar? You would now know what I'm talking about. We're talking about the Catholic Church, B.C., 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 before Christ. 
There is a man called a priest, and he's called a father. But long before Jesus Christ. He says, be a father and a priest. I will give you ten shekels of silver by you. I will pay you to be a priest. I will give you money. I will give you a salary. Sound familiar? And a suit of apparel. Maybe a suit that would, you would stand out from all other people. And thy victuals. I'll give you your food. I'll give you your clothing. I'll give you your housing. So the Levite took the job. Verse 12. Then say, Micah, I have, verse 12, consecrated the Levite. Verse 13. He said, I have got a priest. My own personal priest. You know, I grew up at St. Mary's Star of the Sea Catholic Church. And there were several priests there. You could actually go to that church and say, Listen, my priest was, was Father Fontaine. I don't call him Father no more, but when I was a Catholic, before I was saved in April 1987, I had a priest called Father Fontaine. If I had any anything like that, I'd say, I want Fontaine. There were other priests. I grew up as a Polish Catholic. You ain't going to tell me. I'm going to tell you. There's B.C. before Christ is born. There is a man that is a priest. And he's called Father. And he's on a salary. Judges 18. Next chapter. Verse 1. No king of Israel. Everyone did that they were supposed to. Everyone did that what they wanted to do. Is that not the church age today? Isn't it amazing? You can go in 500 Baptist churches and you got 500 different ways of doing things. We have open communion. We have closed communion. Anybody could be in a choir. We don't have a choir. We celebrate Christmas. We don't celebrate Christmas. They're just all different. Now you're in a book of Judges. And so now the focus is Dan. Dan. Danites. Dan is one of the children of, of, of Jacob. He's the first child born out of proxy. Like Ishmael. Rachel says, I can't have no children. Oh, honey, here's another woman. Sleep with her. He'll get a child. And I, Dan becomes a type of Antichrist. Now, we don't have time to run into that. But when, when Jacob, one of the times that he blesses his children, he says, Dan, as one of the tribes of, <laughs> well, as one of the tribes, what happened to Bean? You are one of the tribes. He's the first one born out of Weirdlock. Like Ishmael. So, verse 3. And what they're doing is they're going out looking for more land. Verse 3, they come to the house of Micah. And they knew the voice of the young man that was a Levite. And they're like, hey, what's going on here? What's this place? And there's something about this place that they're saying, what's so special about this place? They're looking around. And it's not your ordinary Israelite home. I would assume. I'm assuming. But we'll learn more. Verse 4. He said unto the Levite, he says, I deal with Micah. He has hired me. You know, none of the Levites were hired. You know how the Levites were paid? By the offerings. They weren't hired. I am his priest. Now that's the, that's the man saying, hey, listen, I am hired. I am the hired priest. After Dan asked him, hey, what's going on here? There's no scriptures for what, now what we're talking about. Verse 6. Now what they Dan says, listen, hey, we're, we're, we're going to go do battle. We're going to get some land. Can you pray for us? So in verse 6, the Levite says, go in peace before the Lord. Now if you never followed the pole, 
When that dope gets off the airplane, he kisses that ground and he, peace this, peace that, peace be unto you, peace unto you, peep, peep, a poo, I got a peace for you. And then he starts all these wars and he kills all these Christians. He's the biggest phony, phony liar, but peace, 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 peace. Now this guy, he's, he's, he's been in the priesthood for a while. Now he's elevated himself to, a, to, to the words of the Pope. Remember, this all came by mother. Mother started all this. From a curse. From a thief. And somebody held the bag and somebody was a thief. Somewhere in the Bible, I think I read that. So, we're going to move on. Uh, verse 14. Dan goes out. They find this, this group of people. Hey, we, we can conquer them. And they go back home to Dan. And say, hey, listen, let's get the troops ready. Let's go. And then verse 14, the five men come back. He says, um, do you know that no, there, there's a house at Ephob? A terrible... You see, when they walked in that house, like, ooh... This is no ordinary house. When you walk inside of a Catholic church, this is no ordinary church. There's a teraphim, a graven image, and a molten image. Did you remember what Webster said about whoredoms? When you desert the worship of God to the worship of idols, we are now in, been in, Judges 17, Judges 18, we are in whoredom B.C. And it smells and it reeks of the Catholic Church. Okay? Verse 17. Five men went out to spy the land. They came in to, theater, to Micah's house. They took the graven image. They took the ephod. They took the teraphim. They took the molten image. And the priest is standing there at the door. He's standing there with the troops. And verse 18, 18, 666, 666. Men went to Micah's house and fetched the carved image, the ephod, the teraphim, the molten image. And the priest says, what are you doing? <laughs> what do you do? 19, he said, hey, shut up. Is it better for thee to be a priest unto a house of one man? Or thou be a priest unto a tribe and a family? And it, would you like to be a priest of one man? Or would you like to have a whole, a whole country? How about a whole city? Better. So it would be greater to be a priest of the Roman Catholic likeness of many people rather than just one. So bring them to church so we can have many people on Easter. We can have many people on Christmas. We'll come to that in a moment. That's, those are heathen, pagan, Catholic Holiday. But bring them in. Would you rather not have a whole bunch of people or would you rather have empty seats? And listen, I'm telling you right now, I stood one time and preached to two people in the prison. Two people were only were allowed to, they were, the, the place was on lockdown. Only two showed up and they looked at me, well, well, do we go back to our cells and you go home? I said, no, let's, let's go on with the message. And we had the greatest time, just the three of us. Four counting the correction officer. But he had to be there. But who knows what the Lord did with him. It would be better if we had the masses of people. I use that word purposely. And today the Baptist church, they want full seats. And they tell you, you're to be content, but I'm not content. That I see empty seats out there. I make, it, I make it sound like you're soul winning, but I just want those seats filled. So when I go to my pastor buddies, I hey, you know how I many, you know, but we'll, we'll keep on moving on. We don't have time for that. Verse 20. 
And the priest's heart was glad. He took the ephod, the teraphim, and the graven image and went with the midst of the people. I, I'm moving on. I'm going to another parish. Got more people there. I don't care what you say. The Southern Baptists do that. They can move their priests all over. I mean, excuse me, their pastors all around. Your church don't have one, they'll find one for your church. You can't go out independently. You're not independent. You're in, you're, you're in the council. All right, that's not it. We're not done. And in 21, he takes everybody. He takes the cattle. That's important. That's important. It may not seem important, but it is. Verse 24. Judges 18, 24. Micah shows up. You have taken away my gods, which I made. And the priests that I set up. Now, let me give you one word of advice. And this is not going to cost you nothing. Okay? You're not going to sit at your computer, whatever you want, and have this little pan come out for money. Okay? Though some preachers, you know what I mean? You can go online and tithe. <laughs> I don't have any of that crap. I'll let God support me. All right, so what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you can say someone stole your God, you don't have a God. I think it's funny. Around Christmas time, you'll get in the newspaper once in a while. Baby Jesus taken. That wasn't last year, the year before that. Baby Jesus was taken by a, a St. Bernard or a dog, whatever kind of dog. A dog walked away with Jesus. That's not my Jesus. You're not going to walk away with my Jesus. My Jesus is not going to be found in an animal's mouth. Okay? If your God can be stolen, if your God can be stolen, you are in whoredom because your God is an idol or an image. That's Webster's 1828 Dictionary, my friend. That's sad. This man said, you know, Dan's coming. They come and they, you stole my God. So Micah's left with an empty house. You know, if you had, if you had a true Baptist church, and you had a true Catholic church buildings. And both of them burned down one night. The Catholics would say, there goes our gods. And Mary wouldn't be out trying to put the fire out. And Jesus wouldn't be trying to put the fire out. And John the Baptist wouldn't be, I'm talking about the idols and the statues that I come out of the Baptist, uh, excuse me, Catholic church. But the, the, the Baptist church would, I mean, maybe a cross would burn in a collection place. Oh, boy. But there would be no, really, really no gods. But for some Baptists, maybe if the pastor died in the fire, that would be their god. Sorry to say that. Because the Baptists do have a pope, some of them. Not all. Some Baptists have a pope and it's called their pastor. Paul had that problem. So Paul said the Corinthian carnal church. I'm of, I'm of Jesus. I'm of Paul. I'm of John. And the, and the Baptist fill in, I'm a pastor such and such. But that's, you see where I'm going with all this? <laughs> this all ties in to one thing. So, now we got a problem. If you go down to the end of your Bible, Judges 18, 29. Dan gets this piece of land. They win, it's their land. And they take the city. And they name it after Dan, their father. That's no problem. You ever hear the expression from the Bible from Dan to Bathsheba? Dan is the most northernest tribe, city in the land of Israel. And here it is, Judges 18. We are in Israel. We are in the area that Hosea is preaching to. Now look at verse 30. The, the Dan, the city, is named after Dan, their father. Verse 30. The children of Dan set up the graven image. And Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, his sons were made priests. What happened to the one priest? 
Now we got priests, and they're definitely not of Levi. The church grown movement has moved on. This is BC. Now look what the look what the Holy Spirit said. The priest to the tribe of Dan unto the day of captivity of the land. Hosea, we're coming to the end of the captivity pretty soon. We only got a few more kings left. So watch this, verse 31. They set up Micah's graven image, which he made. All the time the house of God was in Shiloh. So there's the Baptist church. Let's just say for a moment. There's the Catholic church. There's the house of God. We'll say for a moment for the Baptist church. All right. What's the other church? The house of Micah. Well, what's really the house of Micah? Mother. It was her silver. It was her idea. <coughs> So we have two two religions. We're not done. First Kings twelve. First Kings twelve. Verse twenty. Now he says, Came to pass, Israel heard that Jeroboam was come. This is Jeroboam too. This is the Jeroboam, the book of Hosea. No, wait, take that back. This is this is the Jeroboam, the book of Hosea. And what happened is Israel has split. This is the first Jeroboam. I got that confused. This is the first Jeroboam. This is not the Jeroboam Hosea. I got to mix it. And what happens is Jeroboam and Rehoboam. They split the, the nation into two. Now we have Judah south. Now we have Israel north. Again, I apologize for the error. I mean, there are two Jeroboams. Jeroboam 2 is Hosea. This is the first Jeroboam. This is the first king of Israel after they split off from Judah. Okay? Verse 20. This is 931 to 910 B.C., thereabouts. In verse 27, 1227, after the split, he feels a little, you know, he said the people go to sacrifice to the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. If they go where they're supposed to go, well, their heart is going to go after Rehoboam. Then they're going to come and kill me. I'm in trouble. If the people do right, I'm doing wrong. Okay? Verse 28. So the king Jeroboam made two calves of gold. I wonder what those images were in, Ju in Judges. Because we're going to look at another man. He's going to make images before we close. He's going to make an image of a golden calf. I wonder what those images were in Judges. I just don't know. I mean, golden arches. And you know why the McDonald's Corporation, and you can find online, you know why they like their golden arches? Because it looks like boobies. Like hooters. Come and get some breast. I mean, uh, chicken. Chicken don't have boobies. But you go to Hooters, you get booty. You get booties. I don't want boobies. I want food. There's another chicken place down here. You go out there, not only do you get boobies, but you'll get way, way up too high shorts. We've seen them. We dealt with them. We witnessed to them. But we got two calves of gold now. This is Israel. This is pretty soon it'll be. Jeroboam 2, and all this is, and I'll show you in a moment, all this is going about these two golden calves, okay? Bethel is the house of God. Dan, Judges 18, Dan, which means judge, that's what Dan means, means judge. Daniel means God the judge, okay? Dan now has the Gold, well, I don't, 
Yeah, the silver cap. Remember? Oh, no, wait a minute. No, he doesn't. He's got two silver images. Remember? The molten image of gold with silver and the, the grazing image, silver. Remember that? Now Dan has two calves of gold. Micah's two images are there. Now there's a calf. Of, now I can't say one because one's going to go down to Bathsheba. One's going to stay in Dan. So now we got three images. The devil, the false prophet, the unholy trinity. After all, God has God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Okay? You want to hear something? Now listen to this. The Roman Catholic, the official papal, the official Pope letter or document. When, they, when the Pope writes something official and signs his seal to it, what do you think that paper is called? It's called a bull. I call it a bull. <clears throat> can't say that word. And that bull comes from bulla, which means the seal. Well, I read about seven seals coming up. So you have, in the city of Dan, you have two silver images. You have two golden images that were made, but one's going to move. I mean move. I didn't mean to move. And maybe one of those calves are up there and they don't know how to spell chicken. Maybe Jeroboam's Cadillac, he's got a bull skull with horns. I'm just giving to you. He says, if it's too much for you to go to Jerusalem, the right place, behold thy God, small g-o-d-s. Wait, a minute. Micah said, I made a God. Jeroboam said, I made gods, O Israel. And these, <coughs> these gods, these bulls, these calves are the ones that took you out of Egypt. The Catholic Church said, our Jesus is the Jesus. We're the only way to get to heaven through our church. No, no. only way for me to get to God to get to heaven is the way, the truth, and the light. Jesus. And they set one in Bethel, verse 29, the house of God, and they put the other one in there. So in Bethel, there's this Catholic religion of Israel in Dan. In the world today, in 2022, there's a supposedly house of God, and in it, there's the Catholic Church, Christmas and Easter, and the other pagan forms. Nothing new under the sun, Solomon tells us. And verse 30 says, this thing became a sin. For the people went to worship before the one, even to Dan. What people? We'll find out. Judah later on will get involved in this. The Baptist churches today are now getting involved. They are they don't study the history, they don't realize what the Catholic Church has done to Bible believers, so they have brought the Catholic religion. Listen, my friend, today is April 19, 2022. On Friday was Passover. Three days and three nights. Today is the resurrection. Today in the Jewish calendar is the first day of the week. Today would be the day that the angel said, He's not here. He's risen. Not on Easter. Easter's pagan. Easter's Roman. Look it up in the King James 1611 Bible. Only one place in the Bible. And it was it was it was Herod's holiday. The Bible doesn't say holiday. The Bible says holy day. How come in America we do not celebrate, we do not honor one Jewish feast day? But we honor the pagan Roman holidays. Lent. Easter and Christmas. And you're saying by my won't he ever get off Easter? Won't he ever get off Christmas? You get that out of my life and I'll shut up about it. Okay? Because I watch 
fellow Christians get deceived in this nonsense that the church has them in. Look at verse 31. He made house of high places. Do you remember about high places in the Bible? Do you know the churches that have the highest peaks? The Catholic Church. You know what the imitation for the Baptist Church? Look, we got a steeple. I know a church, they, they bought a, a, a Jehovah Witness building, and we had to put a steeple. The steeple points us to Jesus. Really? You see the cross at the top of it? Well, I thank God he didn't die in an electric chair. You'd be wearing an electric chair between your boobs. I'd be plugging them in. Blah! All right, let's get back. He made priests, plural, of the lowest of the people. Now, where did he get this idea? He got it from Dan. Where did Dan get it? He got it from Micah. Where did Micah get it? He got it from Mother. So now you got more priests running around of the lowest people. I have good and faithful Christians that I know, and they have well, one died and gone to heaven. But they have in their documented files and all that, there will have been ads put in for the priests of the Catholic Church in Playboy magazine or Penthouse or one of those perverted magazines. What a, what a place to go get your priest. And then you wonder why they're fornicating with your altar boys. And, and look what the Holy Spirit said, which were not of the sons of Levi. They are the wrong priests. Now look at 32. Jeroboam 1, number one, verse 1. This is the first of Israel. Ordained feast in the eighth month, the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast of Judah. So you know what he did? Jeroboam said, let's have an Easter and call it Resurrection Sunday. Bring some eggs, get a dress, get a nice fancy hat. We'll have a celebration more than what Judah and God is having. And he offered upon the altar. He had his own altar. I've been in churches and they tell me, there's no other altar, there's no more better church. Welcome to the house of the Lord today and our altar is open. The Catholic Church has moved in. So he did in Bethel, the house of God. Sanctify unto the calves that he made. And placed in Bethel priests of the high places that he made. There are now Micah's mother's Danites priests running all over Israel. With the golden calves, with, with the, the false holiday, say, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, get your bale tree, get your yule log, bring your presents and give your presents to Jesus on December 25th like Jesus needs a roll of toilet paper. That's why I say it's called Baptist Catholic today, because here it is. And pastors get angry with me. Bring them in. Only two times a year do they come to church. No, Jesus said, go out in the world and preach the gospel. That's what Jesus said. Nowhere do you find, bring them in, bring them in, bring them in from the fields of sin. Why is the church so bad? All are welcome here. That's not, the, that's not a biblical case. Look at verse 23. So he offered upon the altar which he made in Bethel in the 15th day of the eighth. Here's a second holiday. What's the two holidays? Two holidays? Two holidays? Two holidays? Jeroboam had two holidays. I bet you he said, there's two times a year when everybody from Judah comes up. I bet you. In the month that had been devised of his own heart, ordained a feast unto the children of Israel, 
and uh, upon the altar and burnt incense. Man, listen, I haven't been in the Catholic Church since I was 16 years old. I could still smell that raunchy, raunchy smelling Catholic incense in my nose. This is the time of Hosea. This is the whoredoms. It's the Catholic Church. You know what the Catholic Church official decree is? I looked it up today. The Catholic Church started at Jesus. And all our priests are the foundation of the 12 apostles. No, friend. I can find a Catholic Church. We, we saw it in Judges. Exodus 32. Exodus 32. And while you turn there, I'm going to tell you something. From 1 Kings 14 16 to 2 Kings 23 15, you find these words From the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel the sin. From those two chapters, it is 20 times in the Bible. It even runs along with the book of Hosea. It goes on beyond the book of Hosea to the captivity. Remember we read that in Judges? This is the whoredoms of the book of Hosea. And what is it? It's the teachings of the Catholic Church. It's men being ordained to be priests. There is the bull. I mean, the calves. Now, we're not done. Exodus 32, 4. Watch this. This is Aaron. Aaron fashioned and with a graving tool. Where did you hear the word graving before? And he made a molten calf. These be thy gods, O Israel. Where did you hear that before? Why are these molten images and idols? Why does it keep on? These be thy gods. That's what Micah said. That's what Dan said. That's what Jeroboam said. This is what Aaron said. He graven to make it look like a calf. And I bet you that calf had a sign spelled chicken wrong. I just made a whole bunch of Baptists all upset. Well, you know, they, they're not open on Sundays. Yeah, the money they save for not having electricity and all that, it's a profit to them. Wake up. And look at verse 5. And Aaron saw it. He built an altar before it. Even before we got the judges. Even before we got the Jeroboam. Now here's a cow. And everyone come up to the altar now. All heads are closed. All eyes are bowed. Come on. I see you down there. You know you want to come to the altar. I like that. The churches I've been in, they'll say, all eyes closed. All heads bowed. No one's looking. I am. <laughs> and I have seen times in a Baptist church. I see that hand. I'm like. I'm in the back row. No one raised their hand. Liar. Liar. All right. He built an altar. Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Verse, do you see that? We're going to have a feast day to the Lord. The Lord didn't ordain any feast days yet, but the Passover. But we'll add to the Passover. We'll give you Easter. There it is. So verse 6, they rose up early in the morning. You see sunrise service? They offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat, drink, they sat down to have their wafer of Jesus and their blood of Jesus. And then after they dissolved Jesus, they went up and played. <clears throat> the Baptist church, we have a fellowship. After there was a fellowship, we go play basketball, we go shoot, whatever. We have fun. Now look what God says, verse 7. The people go down, they brought up, they corrupted themselves. God says that is corruption. 
The Baptist church said, hey, this is two times a year that people come to church. Hosea said, this is whoredoms. Verse 8, they worshipped. They worshipped the, the molten calf. Molten calf. That was one of the images of Micah. Where did that calf come from? It came from Egypt. I forgot to get the name of the Egyptian God we're talking about. I apologize. Look what he says, verse 8. These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Verse 18. Are you ready for this one? 32, 18. Joshua says there's a war in the camp, verse 17. Moses says, verse 18. He said, it's not the voice of them that shout for mastery. Nor is the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but it is the noise of them that sing do I hear. Contemporary music? How about some jazzy music? How about some uh, uh, make your, your bluegrass in the front of your long septic tank songs? Look, at, look, 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 look. And it passed as soon as they came nigh the camp. They were, there's the calf, and they're dancing. They're having a good old time serving the calf. You didn't see that in Jerusalem. Though they were free to do whatever they wanted to do before the Lord, but look at look at what Aaron done. Look at what Micah had done. Look what the Danites had done. Look at what Jeroboam had done. This is the case we are in in the book of Hosea. All right. Now let me read you a couple passages here, and we'll be done. Second Kings nine twenty two. And it came to pass when Joram saw Jehu. Remember, remember his name came up. <clears throat> he said, "Is it peace, Jehu?" And he answered, "What peace? So long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel, she's in that kingly line coming up. She painted her face. I know a lot of Baptist women paint their face." With her witchcrafts so many. You know, I've been in two churches, one a good church, where there's magic. And it is elevated from the pulpit. Pray for this brother in the Lord. He's going to be doing a magic show for all the children for Jesus. What? All right, keep on moving. Second Chronicles 21.13 but thou hast walked in the ways of the kings of Israel. Every king of Israel was weak. They were evil. And has made Judah to an, an inhabitants of Jerusalem to go a whoring. 2 Kings 9.22, whoredoms. 2 Chronicles 21.13, whores, whoring. Like the whoredoms of the house of Ahab, that's Jezebel's husband, also slain thy brethren of thy father's house, which were better than myself. So there's witchcraft. There's murder going on. You know what the Catholic Church has done to many, 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 many Bible believers? They had killed them. It's the Roman Church. I mean, the Roman, the Roman people that slain, killed, and crucified Jesus Christ. The Roman was in the authority of the power. Ezekiel 16, 36. By the way, Ezekiel, 36, Ezekiel speaks a lot about the whoredoms. We went through Ezekiel. Ezekiel 16, 36. Thus saith the Lord God, because thy filthiness was poured out, and thy nakedness discovered through thy whoredoms with thy lovers, with all the idols of thy abominations, and the blood of thy children, You know a lot of this nonsense in the Baptist church? Never mind Catholic. You know a lot of this nonsense in, in the Baptist church? You're going to find your children going to hell thinking they're saved. They think they're going to get reward. Hey, I learned memory verses. Do I get a reward? No, you got a Tootsie Roll. The only reason why you, you learn that memory verse is so you get the Tootsie Roll. That's your heavenly reward. Your Tootsie Roll. I'll move on. 
Nahum 3, 4. Because of the multitude of the whoredoms of a well-favored harlot, <laughs> those are the words spoken of Hosea, the mistress of witchcraft, selleth nations through her whoredoms and the families of her witchcraft. Friend, the church is mighty involved in witchcraft, magic, Harry Potter, and that other nonsense. I wouldn't be surprised if many of the Baptist churches had those books in their bookshelves or take them to the movies. Or even have the, you know, the, the figurine. I've seen those wicked devil dragons card games. I've seen the cards sit in the pews of a Baptist church. That don't belong there. That does not belong in a Christian's hand. This is the whoredom. And when you hear a Catholic say, well, our church goes all the way back to Jesus, say, keep on going. It goes even further before that. Tell them the book of Judges. Micah and his mother. Like I told you, I will show you the Catholic church in the King James Bible. I didn't use Babylon, Mystery Babylon. I didn't use uh, um, the two Babylon. So I highly suggest you to read those books, and one of those books will give you a headache. I think when I did uh, Babylon, no, not Mystery Babylon, uh, the two Babylons, I really think I should have got four grades for that class. I had to take that. That's one of my classes. Because you had to read that book four different times to get, to get the meaning once. That's some hard reading. I had to take a course on it. I bet you your, many of your pastors did not. I had to take a course on Babylon, Mystery Babylon. That's about the priest. Friend, the Baptist Church is tied in with the Catholic Church today, and we're reading the book of Hosea. It's the same thing. You know what comes next after Hosea? Israel goes into captivity. You know what happens next? Judah has been perverted. And then Judah goes into captivity. You need to read Revelation chapter 3. This is the church of Laodicea and realize we, 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 myself too, we have been perverted to the fact is that Jesus Christ is standing outside the church knocking. Devil's inside. Amen, preacher! Tell them, bring them in, but don't tell them, go spread the gospel. You shut up, Styley. Styley, you shut up. Wait, you don't know what you're talking about, Styley. You just tell them to bring them to church. How many people died Easter Sunday morning at 12, at 1, at 2, at 3, at 4 o'clock in the morning and never made it to your church service and woke up in hell? How many went to the Easter services and the sunrise services? Oh, how great I am! <coughs> and died and woke up in hell. I just showed you the Catholic Church in the Bible. And if you don't believe it, you go back and look at those things again. You don't believe it the second time, it's because you don't want the truth. You don't want to believe it. And you can say whatever you want to say. I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you what. There's words of Paul has come to my heart. Have I become your enemy because I've told you the truth? 